Hi guys, this is going to be the introduction and overview of FMOD Studio. I'm starting a series on um, basically FMOD projects, how FMOD works, and some tutorials. I'm going to show off some demos of how interactive music works. And going along with those demo videos, I will also be providing a tutorial video to go along with that. But let's get started on the basics. And let's talk about the interface here first. Some of you who've never used FMOD before, when you look at this uh, bl brand new project right when you open FMOD, it kind of looks familiar. kind of looks like a digital audio workstation, something like uh, Fruity Loops, Ableton, uh, Cubase, or Pro Tools, and that's because this program is really catered to musicians and audio producers. So it's sort of a familiar interface. So now the first thing we want to do is start a new event because we have nothing here. Let's just make a new event and let's call it tutorial. Let's start with this first. And already you already have your first audio track and your master track. You can also look at the mixer. There we go. There's mixer. There's sends and returns. You know, you can set up buses. It's exactly like Pro Tools or any other sort of D DAW. Now let's see what where you can load into FMOD. Let's go load. Let's see. Let's listen to some of um, my source material here. We're going to talk about loading in audio and how to get it in FMOD. And it, it's pretty simple. You just kind of drag it in. But there's something really important about that. Let's see what this is. All right, this seems all right. Let's just drag this into here. And now we have that same track now in FMOD. Now you see I have it in this folder, Music Looped Waves. And I dragged it into here. But now, whenever you drag something in, let's say let's save it somewhere. Let's save this on my desktop. It's going to create a project folder. So let's call this Tutorial overview. So now we save this. Oh, why is that gone? Let's let's import that again. We should like the first thing you should have done was to save it. But now let's assume we've done that and let's drag in the file. And now you can see here there's something here called an audio bin and you can get it from view, or sorry, window, audio bin, or press control 3. Now, back to what I was saying, when you load in a WAV file or any sort of audio file, it'll make a copy and put it in that project folder. So, tutorial overview and audio bin. And the reason why they look like this right now is because it's in use. When you close this up, this will be the source file. So, it makes a copy of your source material so you don't mess up or corrupt the original files. So that's all we did. We just dragged that in, and now we can press play, space bar, or click play, and we can hear it play. That's great. Now what do we do with that? Well, since this is just an overview, we're going to talk about some of the basic things we can do. We can make this loop. We can just right-click on it and make a new loop region. Now let's start here at the end and see how it loops. That seemed to loop all right. And you have to make sure your source material is um, well prepared for interactive audio. So you have to make sure you engineer your music to loop properly. Let's see what else we can do. Let's see if we want to, um, if we want to make this transition to another loop. Let me see if I can pull up a different one. Um, OK, let's see what this is. Let's see this one. All right, that one seems pretty good. Now, when I put this in here, you'll notice there's no grid. It's not snapped to a grid. And the reason why it's not is because we didn't set a tempo. So we can set a tempo and see this part up here where the blue loop region is. We're going to right click in that sort of space and we can add tempo marker and you put it at the beginning or the start of your new audio track if the audio track is a different tempo from the beginning or any other audio track 
you can have multiple tempos you can set up uh, time changes and all that just like you can in logic or pro tools or anything like that so I know for a fact this uh, this track is 130 because it says so in the name and now you can see it is snapping to the ruler or the grid here and now we can move this and now it's right on the bar line and now let's make a new loop region so now we have a second loop let's listen to this kind of clip there you heard that so a way we can fix that is we can turn off the ruler and if we ju uh, just barely move it we can probably fix that um, usually you want your track to be ready before and you'd have to check on that but just for now let me fix it by slightly moving this over there we go that got rid of that little clip I might have to go back and fix that later. And let's snap, make sure everything snapped to the ruler again. Okay, great. Now we have these two loops. And what do we do now? Well, we can do a lot of things. Let's start with something basic. Um, let me actually first show you. We can add, we need to add markers. So this is the first loop, so let's call this loop one. And this is the second loop. Let's call this loop two. And the reason why we need markers is what if we need to tell FMOD to go somewhere else? We need to tell it to go to the markers, not the actual name of the track or anything. So you have to make markers for all these new points and audio tracks. This is loop two. OK, so now we can add, let's see what we have here. We have loop region. We have sustain point. We already have markers and tempo markers. We already have that. Loop region we have, sustain point. Well, all this means is that, that the track will uh, stop here and it'll sustain all the way to this point. This is where it tells it to sustain and where to end. Uh, we don't need that right now. Or we can have this, we can have a uh, transition and this is pointing to nowhere but we can right click on it and set destination uh, we can always do that later but let's do add transition to loop number two and let's make it transition right when it hits the marker right there it's gonna go right to that marker and now you can put this here at the end it actually didn't go because it's not com exactly right before the loop region. It's actually after. So if we zoom in, it's not. It's actually after the blue line, so it didn't get to hit it. So we need to unsnap it. There we go. Um, it's not the best uh, transition or jump direct jump to it, but it's all right for our purposes right now. Now let's talk about logic. Um, right now, when you have this here, it's going to go straight to loop 2, where you tell it to. Well, that's not really interactive. It's always it's just programmed to do that. So what we can do here is let's make some logic. And there is no parameter, because we need to create one. Up here where it says timeline, you push the plus button, and you can add a parameter. And let's call this transition. And now we have a new knob here, and we can automate stuff here if we wanted to, or we can use it in our logic. So now in our logic here, let's say add parameter condition. Now we have transition. And this is called transition because I simply just call it that. Let's call this something like uh, cake, cake time, because that's, that's similar to the name of the track. But just showing you, now it's called cake time. OK, let's put it back to transition. and we're gonna add that parameter now you see this here it's inside this green sort of area this means it's not activated until it's in that green region so this knob will activate things for us so let's make it transition to loop number two only if the knob is all the way in this this side if you see down here logic and see the green area we can actually move this we can move this around. Let's make it, yeah, let's make it about halfway. So you kind of have to be on this side. 
So let's see what happens when it's not there. It's just going to go past the transition. Nothing happened. Now when it's activated, it's going to go straight to it. Well now this has no way for coming back. So let's do the same thing. Let's make this transition to loop 1. Let's put this in the middle here. And there's no logic. We have to make a new logic parameter. And let's put this one in the beginning. So when it's pointed back, it will go back. Let's see what happens when it's not there. Nothing happens. And when we move it back here, it's going to go back. OK. That's great. Well, now, what happens if you don't want it to wait till the marker? You want it to happen at any given point. Well, that's what the regions are for. So let's get rid of these. And now let's make a transition region to loop 2. So this means it'll transition to that at any given point. And since we do have a time, we have a tempo, we can set it to transition on certain beats or on certain bars. So one every first bar or every second bar, every quarter note, dotted half, half note, and eighth note. So let's just stick with quarter note. And this really only works well when you have tempo set and when you're just jumping directly instead of crossfading between tracks, which is something we're going to talk about in later videos. But for now, let's just talk about this. So let's actually set this to, yeah, let's do half note. And we have to do the transition logic again. And we're going to have this one go back. So transition back to loop 1, transition region. And this doesn't have logic either. So let's do the same thing. Quarter notes. Did I do half notes? Let me see. Yeah, let's do half notes. Depends on the game, too. And this sort of transition knob is something what the game will be controlling. Ultimately, the player controls the game. But in the programming, it would be tied to this knob. So that's how FMOD can be. Um, really helpful with interactive music in uh, video games. And this one will be at the beginning. So now let's try it from the beginning here. And let's transition to loop number two here in a few seconds. There we go. And then now let's go back. And that's pretty much the basics of what you can do. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do with these transition regions. And let's see if we can do one more thing here. Let's, let's see if we could put this loop down here. Let's make a new audio track. Actually, let's, uh, let's see what we can do. Let's make a new audio track. So right click, and you can make a new audio track. And let's put this down here. Now I know this is kind of crazy. Let's make a copy of this. Paste it here. Let's make this twice as long. Let's get rid of these loop region, uh, transition regions. And let's see what happens when we play it. I know it's going to play both, but I'm going to show you guys something really cool. OK, now let's make something. Let's delete this. Let's make a uh, crossfade. Not um, layered crossfade, not crossfading from one track to another, but these tracks are going to be playing at the same time, but only one will be heard. So let's make a new thing. Let's call this intensity level. And actually, let's switch places. Let's put this one up here. So the bottom one is more intense, so let's call this less intense, more intense. And we're going to automate the volume inside here. So there's no volume automation. So we're going to right click, add automation, and same thing here. And now this one will be at 0 dB. So the full volume on the track can be heard. And this one will be at negative infinity 0 dB, which technically means nothing. Basically, it means uh, just silence. Theoretically, it's not really possible when something's playing. That's the story for another day. But let's put this at the end here, 0 dB. Sorry, uh, all the way down, not 0 dB. 
This other one, this more intense track, will be at zero dB when the knob reaches this side. So like what we're looking at right now is the intensity level knob that we created. And when this moves over, as you can see, as this one moves to the right, it's fading out the top track and fading in the bottom track. Let's see how this works. And now let's do our little crossfade. And we can crossfade back. And crossfade in. And now let's look at this. It's a little basic, and when you can do this with a lot of different tracks, it can get really, really intense and really immersive. And other things about FMOD, um, let's see what else we can do. There's actually a lot of effects you can have. Um, let's just mute this one for a second and just hear this one. Um, if you click on less intense, this track here, and we push the plus button, we can add sends, just like in any other uh, digital audio workstation. And we can add all these sort of effects here. And let's see, let's play with uh, a low pass filter. And you can add even more than that. Let's add some reverb. Let's add a lot of reverb. that. And again, if we look at this intensity level knob, we can add automation to this and control it with any of these knobs and parameters that we make. So there's a ton of possibilities. So that's sort of a basic overview of what um, you can do in FMOD. There's a lot more things you can do. This is just sort of the basic kind of uses for it. There's way more that we're going to talk about. So please stay tuned for more of those videos. I will, like I said before, I will sh um, show a demo video of a track working in FMOD and explain how it works. And then I'll also upload the tutorial on how I made it and how I created it so you guys can try it yourselves. So thanks for watching, and I hope you guys stick around for more videos.